Um, so how long have you been uh, like coaching chess at Oregon? I have been coaching chess. This is actually my first year here, um, school year. There was a previous instructor who used to be here. Um, so when he was no longer able to be here, um, we were trying to get in here last year, but we couldn't find the right time um, where the schedule would work. So um, I always enjoyed Nick and I can't think of the other person's name, man, that's going to bug me. But no, they do a lot of great things here. So I just wanted to be here and I'm like, Nick and Miss Tiffany. yes, Miss Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Miss Tiffany. So I wanted to make that commitment and be sure that we, uh, so I pledge that if it wouldn't be anybody else, I'll come personally. So this is my first year. So I, I just got one more question and I'm going to pass it to my friend for test. Okay. So for me, when I play chess a lot, it's like when like one of my friends like takes all like, of my of my like pieces. Okay. And you only have a queen left. Do you like what is your strategy to like not get your queen taken from you? Okay. So first, I think you mean your king, right? So the object of chess is to, um, of course, capture the king, which is known as checkmate. Okay. So in chess, I would say to prevent your king from being captured, you have to, just like any other sport, you gotta play defense, right? And you gotta protect your king, okay? Um, so what chess will teach you is just to think first before you move, okay? So it's like life, like you gotta think before you leap or look before you leap, right? So I would think the strategy would be to um, look carefully at your moves, make sure your king is safe. That would be the main strategy to protect your king. Make sure he's safe at all times, okay? Good question, too. Uh, all right, so uh, I have so a question. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so what made you play chess? Man, so my uncle, my late uncle first taught me uh, the game of chess, but I was interested more in checkers, right? Um, but it wasn't until my father-in-law set me down in 1998 and showed me how to play. And when he showed me, man, I never looked back. But actually, to be honest with you, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, hip hop group Wu-Tang, they made chess kind of cool, right? So when I was coming up, a um, long time ago, not that long ago, but like maybe in the 90s, they, um, part of their appeal was that they would use a lot of martial arts and they would also use chess. And they had a song called The Mystery of Chess Boxing. So that kind of made chess cool, right? So we, sometimes we think of chess as just for geeks and nerds, right? But when you see like some of like your even sports heroes, like I can't think of the guy that just got the big contract in the NBA, Jalen Brown, like he's a huge chess player, right? He plays for the Boston Celtics. So I guess what made me play was like, I just loved it, right? And I met so many people um, from playing it, so many great people and it's taken me some great places. I never thought I would actually be teaching it, but I've been able to actually um, be at Xavier University at a symposium to talk about chess. So um, as a ch person that loves chess, we like to say chess is life and life is chess because chess is very analogous. And what I mean by that, it reminds you of like life because life is about what decision making and chess is about making moves. So every move that you make is either gonna give you an advantage or a disadvantage. And just like life, Every decision you make, it'll either give you an advantage or a disadvantage. So choose your moves and choose your decisions wisely, okay? Hope that answers your question. That's a good explanation. Oh, thank you. I also have another question. Okay. Like, do you play anything other than chess? Like, what's your favorite thing other than chess? Other than chess? Oh, man. So um, I used to, when I was probably your age, I was a huge, uh, I love to play basketball. I never played organized, but, you know, just recreationally, I love to play tennis. Um, so now I don't really do too many physical sports, you know, um, so primarily um, I enjoy just watching other sports. So besides chess, I enjoy reading. And besides that, I enjoy working with um you know just man you guys are just like so precocious man like i love like your interview skills man man you guys are gonna go far so i would say i love working with young people because you are indeed our future you know and i take that seriously um i don't take it lightly to be have the opportunity to actually um share the game of chess with you is an honor because it's not just chess i'm sharing the game of life with you um, and hopefully, I can't wait to see what some of you will become later on in life. So, what is 
the, your favorite thing about chess? My favorite thing about chess is being able to connect with different people. That's my favorite thing about chess. Like, even though I, I love the game, but the thing about chess is it's so what we call egalitarian. That means it's so equal, like across that board, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter your gender, your race, your nationality, like it connects us as human beings. So that's my favorite thing about chess is that it doesn't matter how young, how old you are, how old are you? I'm 11. 11, how old are you? I'm, well, it's my 11th year being alive. Okay, just... all right, and you are? 10. I've lost to children as young as you. That actually means that, that this is my 12th year. Okay. So, but to answer your question, um, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, man, like you can lose to anybody. So chess, you can, I mean, you can be 85 year old and play a child that's five years old and lose, you know, it doesn't matter. Okay, good questions. So that means it's all about the skill. So like, one more question. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite chess player? Man, my favorite chess player. So there's this chess player he was an American, his name was Paul Morphy, right? So one of the most well-known chess players, especially not just internationally, but from America, his name is Bobby Fischer. And um, he's no longer alive, but in the early, or in the mid 70s, he became the first American, what they call the world champion of chess. And he defeated a Russian, and it was like really, really big news, right? Because at the time, they, they had this thing called the Cold War, and it was like the United States against Russia, so it was a huge thing. So, but Paul Morphy was the person that Bobby Fischer patterned his game after. And there's a great movie that if you ever wanna watch a good chess movie, it's called Searching for Bobby Fischer. Um, great movie, check it out if you can, okay? I'm going to pass it on to my boy. Okay. What's up, man? You ever, you know how you ever, you went to a park before, right? Yep. Do you know how you ever seen like a big chess board? Mm -hmm. Like painted on and it's like these big chess boards? Yeah, yeah, so those are the big, so they have some down, it's, it's a smell park downtown. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. But they took it kind of, they scrubbed it off. Did they? Oh, okay. Board. Yeah, now those are cool to play with. I mean, and you can actually play a legitimate real game with those big pieces, man. I have something similar, but it's more like a garden size, like you can put it out in the yard. There's like bigger pieces, but yeah, those are really nice, man. Absolutely. But well, you like to see, do you know how you go to the park, you see a table and mm -hmm. it has test on it, mm -hmm. it's painted on it, yep. you play it. You ever played though with that with somebody? I have. So. Um, a lot of people enjoy playing chess at the park. That's like really, especially up in places like New York. Um, I forget the name of the park that they play it up there, but there's several parks that they play it, but that's like a famous place that people like to go. But even here, people play at Eden Park. That's a popular place to play um, chess. Um, so there's, yeah, playing in the park is like very, very popular, um, especially in the summer when it's very nice out. Washington Park, I know they play, and even down at Smell Park they play. So yeah, you can play chess. Um, yeah, chess in the park is a lot of fun, man. A lot of people gather around, they smack talk and stuff like that, you know, but it's all in fun, you know? But yeah, chess in the park is a, a good scene, man. Man, you guys had great questions, man. You ever play tic-tac-toe? Yeah, I play tic-tac-toe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, anybody ever play tic-tac-toe with? Who, out of everybody you play tic-tac-toe with, who was your favorite person you played with? Who was my favorite person to play? Oh, man, to play tic-tac-toe with? Man. It's funny, the first thing that comes to mind, there was a person that used to play me at work. You know, I used to work for the public library and um, and one of my coworkers, uh, she would always tease me because, you know, there's a strategy where every game should end as a cat game, right? If you know what you're doing, right? So, but yeah, she would always... It was like the both one. Yeah, it's like, so basically like when it's a cat game, it's like a tie. Right, yeah, but it even in tic-tac-toe, there's a strategy. You don't want to say it like, do you feel like your life is like dedicated to chess? Man, I wouldn't say dedicated to chess, but what I will say is that um, as a chess enthusiast, we like to say chess is life and life is chess. So I'm dedicated to life, you know? Um, so from that aspect, yes, um, my dedication is first and foremost, um, you know, um, I'm a firm believer in God, so that's my first dedication. And then my family, um, and then just my community, right? So I think each of us is here to make the world a better place, you know, than what we found it. I know I said how one more question, but I just want to ask, 
You were talk, um, at first you talked about Joe Burrow having like a chess set. Could you tell us more about that? Of course. So, as you know, Joe Burrow is like the uh, Bengals quarterback, franchise player, right? Unfortunately, he was hurt this year. But, yeah, Joe Burrow is an avid chess player, right? Um, he actually keeps, like, you can go down to his locker at, I, I want to say Paul Brown, but it's Paycor Stadium now, right? If you go down to Paycor Stadium, you'll see Joe Burrow actually has, like, a chess board set up in front of his locker. And he plays a lot against one of his fellow teammates. And I'm going to butcher his name, but last name is oh, Chidobe Owuze. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. And he, of course, was named the best NFL chess player out of all the NFL people that play chess. They had a tournament online. I think it was on chess.com. And he won it. But I do know, um, according to chess.com, when the Bengals were in the Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams, what was that? Twenty was that twenty twenty one or twenty, right? Or twenty twenty two? I can't. I think twenty twenty one. Um, before the game, like just to relax, he played like I don't know. They they say like seven or eight games on Chess.com. So that's what he does to relax. And also, who else is a great chess player here from Cincinnati? Is Joey Votto. He plays for the Cincinnati Reds. He plays chess. He's really, really good too. So yeah, some of your fame, your, your your favorite celebrities and people that you probably admire, they play chess. Trust me, chess is fun. You know. For me, it is too. Good. That's what's up. Okay. Have you ever played like with a famous person like in chess? Have I ever played a famous person? Um, no, not personally. The closest I've probably come to it so part of the program that we're with we actually have a grand or several grandmasters that come here every year for our tournament i should have had that up to plug it but um, we have a tournament every year down at the bingo stadium and this year is going to be march 23rd and hopefully some of your order students will participate at the chess tournament um so maurice ashley who was um became the first um black chess grandmaster i want to say around 1998 somewhere around there so he comes he's been coming here for the last 23 years to our annual tournament and he actually visits some of our schools that we teach in so maybe one year i'll arrange that he come here all right matter of fact i'm gonna put that on camera so it's documented i'll make sure that maybe next year i'm not i'm not even gonna say maybe we're gonna make him come here okay but so he's like the closest i've probably come to i've gotten to meet him and there's some other, oh, so there's a Disney movie called, called The Queen of Katwa. It's a true story. And it's about a Nigerian chess player who came from a very impoverished background, but through chess, she was able to lift her family up out of poverty and whatnot. And then also there's another young Nigerian who's, he's 11 years old now, and he's on his way becoming a chess grandmaster. He actually, they're gonna have a documentary about him. He was here in 2020, so I got to meet him. He's about you guys' age, and he came here as a Nigerian refugee with his family. They were fleeing from a terrorist group. They were homeless, and he started playing chess. And then when they saw it, they was like, man, who is this guy playing all these chess games and doing all these puzzles? Long story short, he's now made a living playing chess. Man, his family um, are really great people. And uh, so that's kind of like, you know, I've never played them, but I got to meet those individuals and I got to read the, the, the real life queen of Katwa. Um, she came here too and there's a Disney movie based on her. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. No, thank y'all, man. And great questions, man. Y'all like true reporters too because it's always one more question. Did I ever play? It's the queen. I didn't. I only got to meet him. I didn't get to play against him. His name is Tani. Tani. Um, I didn't get to play him. I just got to meet him. I actually met him over at Xavier University and then he was down at the uh, Bingo Stadium and he was playing like, I mean like 15, 20 people at the same time. He was literally just going around the board and he beat them all. At like, at that time I think he was probably around probably eight or nine years old, you know? But really good chess player. Yeah, he's now an international master trying to become the highest, the youngest grandmaster ever. That's what he's doing. So chess can uh, do a lot of great things. And even if you don't play competitively, there's a lot of great things you can take away from chess. You know, like think first, move later, okay? So if you don't take anything away from it, just remember that one principle, think first and move later. So make sure you're thinking before you make decisions, okay? All right, thank y'all very much.
I appreciate y'all. Is there an organization you represent or anything? Yes, so I am with the uh, Chris Collinsworth Pro Scan Fund. So speaking of the Bengals, um, he was a former great wide receiver for Cincinnati Bengals, and uh, that is in conjunction with Pro Scan, which is the MRI, CAT scan, radiology company. And in addition to the chess program, they also have the uh, pink ribbon um, campaign to um, for breast cancer awareness for women. So yeah, yep, that's. Thank you for sharing. Thank y'all, man, man.